It's not a secret that film cameras have been jumping in price over the last couple of years. A rise in demand combined with limited supply means that any film camera is not going to be cheap. But I'm convinced that if you look hard enough, budget-friendly film cameras still exist. So a couple weeks ago, I set out to find the cheapest SLR I could get my hands on. And I think I found it. So I thought it'd be fun to give myself a budget of around $50 to jump on eBay and find an SLR that was both tested and working. And I wanted to do this just as a way to help remind people, myself included, that you can find a film camera that produces beautiful images, that is easy to use, and isn't going to break the bank. And so the film camera that I ended up buying was the Nikon F80. So the Nikon F80 or N80 in the United States was actually one of the last film cameras manufactured by Nikon in 2000. And what's cool about that is because digital was all the rage, you can definitely tell it was built with a digital camera in mind. So you have things like autofocus and continuous shooting and different priority modes, all these different features that definitely make it feel like a DSLR. The F80 was marketed as an alternative to other Nikon film cameras like the F100, but smaller, lighter, and much less expensive. But of course, the cheaper price does come at a cost. It is a little cheap, it is a little plasticky feeling, and I don't know if it's just my version, but the dials, they feel a little sticky. Uh, anyway, as far as the lens, the nice thing about the F80 is Nikon's been using the F mount for so long. You'll have a ton of different options to choose from, including modern lenses. But for me, in the spirit of this being an exercise in cheap film finds, I also wanted to find a cheap lens. So I picked up this nice and beat up and hopefully completely adequate Nikon Nikkor non-AI 24 millimeter F 2.8 lens. All right, so far I'm liking the F80. It's nice and lightweight, it's pretty compact. It definitely does feel like you're shooting on digital, which is a little dangerous. I have to keep reminding myself that I am shooting on film, but enjoying it so far. I like the viewfinder too, it's nice and clear. It's got this nice red crop line, so I'm gonna keep putting it to the test. I should mention too, because I'm using an older lens, I have to do everything manual on this camera. So I can't use some of the features like aperture priority or autofocus or even using the light meter, but definitely something you're capable of doing on newer lenses and probably some nice features to have, especially if this is one of your first film cameras. The F80 has a lot of features you find in a DSLR. I'll go through the most important, but I'm just not a technical reviewer. So if you do end up buying this camera, I'll link a couple helpful videos below that walk through how to use it and how to get the most out of it with its different features. So on the left here is the drive mode switch lock. Pushing this lock down will allow to switch between single shot, continuous, self timer, and multiple exposure mode. It has the different modes you find in a DSLR as well. So you have program mode, you have shutter priority, you have aperture priority, and manual mode. CSM is custom mode. This thing is really customizable with different functions. I won't get into the details, but again, I'll link a video below if you're curious. And metering, if you're not using an old lens like me, using the camera's internal light meter is a nice option. And you can even change the different metering modes with this selection dial. So center weighted is the top, matrix is the middle, and spot metering is on the bottom. And it takes CR123 batteries. These are pretty standard. You should be able to find them at any hardware store. And also my favorite feature, this little pop-up flash that I will surely never use. I am laughing though at how hard it is to turn the dial on this thing. It's not jammed, it's just sticky is the only way to describe it. And there's some sticky residue on the camera body. Apparently this is a thing with Nikon cameras and some rubbing alcohol would probably clean it up, but I'm not gonna do that. This is a feature, not a bug. And 
when it comes to image quality, I was pretty impressed. There were a few minor issues with vignetting. Some images came out a little muddied and underexposed. Could be user error, likely has to do with the cheap lens I bought. But honestly, like any good camera, if you get some good glass, you can make some beautiful images with this thing. So sure, you might not look as cool out there as you would with an FM2 around your neck, but I think that the Nikon F80 is really just a great reminder that even in today's current film photography world, where things seemingly won't stop getting more expensive, there's still plenty of very affordable options out there, especially if you're okay with the build being a little cheap and plasticky, and maybe don't mind some sticky dials. Freaky.